Hello again, welcome to my video that's going to be supplementing chapter 4 of the Social Media for Creative Libraries book and in this video I'm going to look at a tool called Scoop It and I'll also take a look at some of the other tools that are available for curating content that's available to you. Now since I've used Symbolo and you've probably seen that in the previous video that I did and if you haven't it's going to be the one that's supporting chapter 3. I've decided to use Symbolo to simply make my life a little bit easier to point you towards some of the different resources that are out there. Now the very first one that I want to show you is Scoop It. Now what Scoop It will do for you is it's a way that you have of being able to create and then share content that is available to you. Now because I'm in my Scoop It page as me, it looks slightly different than if you simply go directly to the URL, but I'll talk about more, more about that in a minute. What I've done at Scoop It is I have created my own page on internet search. The idea is that as I'm wandering around the internet looking at different things, just straightforwardly browsing. If I find something that I think is appropriate for my Scoop It page, I can directly scoop that, link to it, make a comment if I wish to, and then make it available for people. What Scoop It is doing to begin with it, it, is that it's providing me with some suggestions that I might wish to include myself in my own subject area of internet search. Scoop it knows what I'm interested in because it's seen the kind of stuff that I have scooped before. So it's quite an intelligent package and the other advantage of it is that it's useful because I don't need to have to think about where to find the search information. Scoop it is bringing search to me. However, let's have a look at the actual page itself. So you can see here within internet search the articles that I have linked to and the comments that I have made about them. So it's nice and helpful that all that you need to do is come to my internet search page and you'll get to see the information that I think is particularly interesting. How you add a scoop is very simple. If we go to, for example, a blog post that I wrote, I can go to the Scoop It bookmarklet, click on that, and what the Scoop It dialog box is now doing is it's giving me the opportunity to add this particular story that I have found to my internet search page. And if I scroll down here, it gives me a little bit of information about what that story is. I can add my own insight. And I can then, if I wish to, further share that onto Twitter and Facebook or LinkedIn, for example. If I'm happy with what I've got, I can click on Publish and that page will now be loaded for me. It is a freebie, but if you want to use it in any great detail, then you can pay for a commercial version. And if we go back to our page here, we can now see that my new story has already been added. I have a number of different Scoop It pages. So this is my page on internet search and we can have a look at my page on privacy and search which does the same kind of thing. It's not only useful for me to be able to collect all of this data together, as I said Scoop It brings content to me, but what I also get from Scoop It is the really valuable information from other people. So for example I'm very interested in ebooks uh, and libraries but I don't have time to look for all of that information myself and I certainly have, have the experience to pull all of those different subjects apart to see what's really the best in the field. However, this isn't something that I need to worry about. 
Alison Tyler, who's mentioned in the book, has created an excellent page called eBooks and Libraries. And so what Alison is doing here is she is keeping me up to date with all of the new resources that she's finding because she's an expert in this area. She'd probably blush to hear me say it, but as far as I'm concerned, Alison is my expert. She's my go-to person when I need information on books and libraries. You'll see at the top, you have a very nice, simple URL for the different Scoop It pages that are there. So that's Alison's page. Uh, we've then got mine, Scoop It slash T for Topic Internet Search. And then we've also got Privacy and Search as well. So if you're looking to spend time wandering around the internet, if you're looking for a tool to support that browsing that you're doing and to be able to find information for other people and also to be kept up to date yourself, I would certainly recommend having a look at Scoop It. Going on to some of the other resources that are available, there are a couple that I use with my tablet device or my iPad. The first one of these is a tool called Zeit, and the second tool is one that's called Flipboard. Flipboard has actually recently purchased Zeit, and at some point I suspect that they may merge the two together. But the thing that I like about both Zeit and Flipboard is these work on my tablet device, as I mentioned. Consequently, I can't really show it to you very easily, which is a bit of an irritation, but never mind, we'll carry on. What this does is, it, again, it brings stories back to me based on what I'm interested in. I go to Zite and Flipboard and I say, this is who I am. This is who I am on Facebook. This is who I am on Twitter. And both Zite and Flipboard will find stories that people that I'm following on those social networks have been talking about. They bring those back to me. I can then click on the story that interests me and go off and have a look at it. So what I'm actually doing is I'm utilizing my social networks to get information for me and to bring it back to me. So as far as I'm concerned, the more people that I follow on social media platforms, such as Twitter and Facebook, the better the selection of stories that I get returns to me using these particular tools. But there are plenty of others. Um, I've only given you a small selection here, believe it or not. Um, these are just some of the ones that I like and that I use. The next one up is a tool called Sway. And what you can do with this one is, as you can see here, you can link to your accounts at places like Twitter, and Facebook and LinkedIn. And what Sway will then do for you is when it finds stories and things that you're interested in, it will pull those up onto the screen for you. And you can then share them with other people or you can click on the story and read it in depth. Again, it's another freebie. The nice thing with a lot of these tools is once you've set them up, I've given them access to your accounts and it really only is just your followers. There's nothing um, to worry about with that. Once you've given them access to your accounts, these things will keep updating. You don't have to um, husband or uh, maintain them at all. They just do the job that they're supposed to. Another tool that we've got here is Nuzzle. And again, news from your friends on Twitter and on Facebook. And as you can see here, Nuzzle is getting that information together. And so I can then go in and have a look at the different stories that are available. This is particularly useful because I can then see who the people are who are talking about those particular stories. And that gives me a very good indication of the particular area that those are in, and I can look at the comments that people have made about them. So it's a really useful tool for me to use. And as you can see here, news from my friends, news from friends of friends, news that I have may, may have missed, and so on. Again, a powerful tool, completely free of charge. We've then got a resource that's called Medium. And once again, as you can probably guess by now, Medium finds information and stories for you based on what you're interested in in your 
different subject areas of interest. Medium, to be honest, is not one that I use a great deal myself, but it's available in just in case you're interested in it and you want to try it out. Another one is a resource called paper.li or paperly. And here we've got the Phil Bradley Daily. I've also got one called the Phil B Express. And the way in which this one works, surprise, surprise, it finds the information that you have um, been interested in based on the number of the, the followers that you've got on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and so on. And so we're now getting stories through that are of interest to technology, science, photographs, and so on. You can also, if you wish to, simply give somebody the URL. So if you're interested in having a look at this, you can go to paper.li, Phil Bradley, and have a look at the page as it has been created. Again, I don't need to worry about this because having set the thing up, it stays there running in the background for me. There are a number of tools that I can use with my email. So one here is a thing called news.me. And if I go to my email page for news curation that I've got, as you can see here, I've got my news.mi page here. And these are the key stories that the resource thinks I would be interested in. There's one there for the paper.li, for the Philby Express. I'm also being kept up to date on Scoop It. So I'm able to use my email to keep me up to date with what's going on as well. I can go to another tool called Pulse News. This is more like a news reader. I can choose the areas that I'm interested in or I can add my own content, other people's blogs for example. And again, this is constantly being updated. And I could also use it on my tablet device as well. Uh, another tool called Newit doesn't seem to like working within the Symbolu uh, universe. So if we just go to that, there we go, we're now at Newit. And I think that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. Again, we're getting stories coming up that are in the subject areas that probably should be of interest to me. Again, this isn't one that I use very much myself, but it's worthwhile having a look at just to see if it's something particularly attractive. Finally, the Tweeted Times. This is a nice resource again, because what it does is looks at the people that you're following on Twitter, find stories that are interested, uh, that you should find interesting because they're posted by friends or friends of friends. And you can then go off and have a look at those stories. And you can also share them to your own social networks as well. So that's a very quick overview of some of the uh, news curation tools that are out there. If the activity that you have got is keeping up to date in a particular subject area or making information available for other people, uh, such as current awareness bulletins or dissemination of information, these tools are going to be a really useful addition to your armory. And I hope that you find um, some fun and enjoyment exploring them. In the next of the videos, I will be doing one on creating great presentations without using PowerPoint. So until then, bye bye.